Hi, I'm Quentin Burlingame, and I am a certified Ross instructor, and I am bringing the Bob Ross wet and wet technique to the Dixon, Davidson, and Williamson County areas. I already have my canvas prepped with liquid white, so come on up and we'll paint a little painting. The Bob Ross Teacher Certification Program is taught at the Bob Ross Workshop and Gallery in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. It was opened in 1992 by Bob and Annette Kowalski, and they still teach the same curriculum that Bob created specifically for teacher certification. I thought today we'd make a real bright, pretty sky. Yeah. Remember, whenever you're doing your reflections, always use long left and right horizontal strokes, where in the sky, we're going to use nice little crisscross strokes. Bob always called them crisscross strokes. They're more like figure eight strokes because you don't want to leave marks on the, on the canvas. I'm going to insert some bright red. And I think we're going to finish that off with a little bit of phthalo blue. It's a nice, bright, pretty blue. Blending that in with that bright red, but being very careful around that yellow. Nice little purple sky going on there. Like in the air, like in the sea. I don't know if that's a saying, but it is now. Is it? I don't know. And now it's time to wash the brush. Wipe off all that excess. Give it a good shake. Beat the devil out of it. All right. Now we're going to blend over this whole thing, starting in the light area. Very, very gently. Going across the whole thing. Just like that. Removing any excess streaks. Just stirring it all up together. There we go. That's a nice little sky I've got going on there. How about we had a couple happy little clouds? A little bit of that phthalo blue. A little bit of that alizarin crimson. Dull that down with some titanium white. There we go. little lavender color. I think we can go a little more red with it. There we go. That's 
fill up our fan brush real full. Let's throw in some clouds. Maybe something like that. Who knows where it's going? Doing its own little thing. Give him a friend right over here. Something like that. I'm gonna blend this all together. The trick to the clouds is there's multiple steps. Don't just throw them up there and expect them to be done. We're going to take our, our big two inch brush and we are just going to blend away that bottom. We want to keep our nice sharp upper portions of our clouds. But we want to kill that bottom, make it nice and soft and fluffy. Something like Then, we're going to fluff our clouds up, it's less thick in the paint. Two hairs and some air, we're going to knock that down, just like that. And finally, we're going to brighten them up. We're going to come in with some just almost pure white. Maybe a touch, touch of the cadmium yellow to brighten them up. Counter that deep purple underneath. Touch that bright red in there too, make it nice and orange. We're really just kind of squishing this paint on there, making it nice and thick, nice hard upper edge. Something like that. Go. Again, fluff them. There we go, gently. Got a little, quite a bit of little wispies going on, but that's okay. We're going to knock them down right here.
I want to finish off these pods by adding one more little layer here in front. Brighten them up just a tad, I think. Mooms are one of my favorite parts, using that palette knife to just stick them up there. First thing we need to do is make some dark. When we make some dark, taking some of that deep blue, some of that midnight black, some of that Van Dyke brown, gonna save some of that for later, and what's left of our Blizzard and Crimson, just to warm it up a tad. Yeah, there we go. I think we have dark. And then we just cut across. After it's nice and thin. There we go. Nice little roll on there. And I think the peak of my mountain is going to be right here. Pull that on up. Peak right in there. I think. <laughs> and one more little peak over here. It'll be our medium peak. Beating with our big peak a little bit. Take our big old brush, and we are going to blend this way out into the distance, just like that. Doing our closest peak last. Here we go. Time to throw on some snow. It's okay if your white isn't perfectly clean. Nature isn't always perfectly clean. And cut across. And then Bob always said, 
that there's no pressure to this. There's no pressure because you are not touching your knife to your canvas. You're touching paint to paint ever so gently. Do it like that. Then we're going to take some of this white mixture here, add in just a touch of blue, just a touch of our dark. It's not too blue and a little bit grayed down. So you need a little more blue in there. It's unlike me. I usually go a little bit too blue. There we go. This will be our shadow snow. Cut across. We're gonna cut it just here in the corner right there. There we go, looks good. Now before I go any further with that, I'm going to go ahead, come over here, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that peak. We're actually going to grab more of our original white highlights now, and we are going to play a couple games with that there. Ridge line, just like that, bringing that on down. Of course, anytime you got a new little highlight, it needs its own little private shadow. I think this peak right along in there. Connecting maybe right around in here. Drift off in the distance. I'm gonna take a dry brush, my one inch in this case, and we are going. Just tap, 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 tap along the bottom edge, along the shape of that mountain. We're just going to soften that. Sweep up following that shape. And that's going to push it way back into that distance. So we can throw in some nice little foothills in front of it here. So for our foothills, We'll take just a little bit of our dark from earlier and we're going to mix it in with our blue purple mixture from earlier. Just a touch of sap green, a little more white in there. These foothills, you could go purple, you can go green. Foothills can be just about any color you'd like and that, that they'll look good. I think that's good. Kind of a weird gray, misty green color. I 
think I'm going to use my two-inch brush. And we're going to load this, give it a little wiggle on both sides. So you're going to be able to see the shape of your trees on the top of that foothill in the paint itself. Half the magic happens directly on the, the palette long before it gets up here. And just going to start sticking that in. Something like that. I'm going to throw in a, another one coming in, in this direction. Allow it to fade out towards the bottom. Yeah. And we're going to bring this on down into what will become our reflections. And I think I can clean my brush again. So I get a nice clean brush to blend those reflections in. Beat the devil out of it. All right. Pull reflection straight down and then straight horizontal. Just like that. And then, this is one of my favorite little parts of this technique. We're going to do this with liquid white. Liquid white is the same stuff we use to coat the canvas with and is a thinner white. Our regular titanium white is very, very thick. The liquid white is very, very thin. Got a little bit of liquid white on my palette knife there. I'm gonna figure out where that waterline lives. We're just gonna cut right into the, the canvas. When I say cut, we are cutting a perfectly horizontal straight line back and forth, really sawing in to that canvas. All lines need to be perfectly horizontal even if your bank goes at an angle. There we go. A couple little ripples in there. I think I'm going to put more ripples right in here. Just like that. All right, no painting is complete without a tree. I think I'm gonna put a nice big old tree living right over here. So to do that, we're gonna take our dark and our sap green, and we're gonna make dark green. The green really doesn't even matter that much at this point because the shadows in the tree is just dark. Wipe out our fan brush. Load her up. Take that to a nice little chiseled edge. Figure out where we're going to put the peak of our tree in right in there. Now 
And just like that, we have a nice big old strong evergreen living right in front of our little lake scene. These trees eat a lot of paint, <laughs> but that's okay. It's better to have the right amount of paint than not enough paint. That's the biggest mistake most everyone makes when they first start out is not enough paint. And those nice little reflections I added are going to go away. That's, f that's probably the hardest first lesson I learned learning this technique is don't get attached to anything because it's probably going to get covered up. We don't know. Change your mind halfway through a painting. Now I'm going to throw in some bushes around here in the foreground, kind of ground him. We're going to do that by pulling our one inch brush through that same color one direction. We're going to use that new rounded edge and we're just going to stamp in shape of some bushes. Right down in here we just want it dark. We don't really care all too much about what's going on down here. As long as it's dark. Here, so this can kind of all live together. Now, there's one thing this tree is missing before we can ever think about doing any highlights. He needs a friend. So let's add a couple little friends in here. I'm thinking a nice little one right over in here. This one's getting a little bit happy down there at the bottom. He's eating quite a bit. Here's the dark along the edge. And I think one right over here hiding off to the edge. Darken him up just a tad. Alright. Let's throw some highlights on. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make some trunk color. Van Dyke Brown and a little bit of that burnt sienna. Oh, art. And a little bit of white. And a little bit liquid white. And we're just going to marble this one. We don't want this one a real solid color. And a peak of each of these, we're going to slice upwards, creating a nice little sharp pointy peak. Get a little roll of that. And just ever so gently, we're going to throw in a little trunk. Just 
like that. Switch over to our highlighting fan brush. And with just a touch of the green, just a touch liquid white, we're going to come straight into cadmium yellow. Fill that brush up nice and thick. Say thick. Cadmium yellow is a thin color, and we wanted to thin it a little bit more so that it sticks right on top of these trees. You get it thin enough, and that canvas will just take the paint that it wants. And as you move on down, it's going to pick up some of that darker color and just kind of fade away. Load that back up. Got my sun kind of coming in right over here, so I am going to have my highlights a little coming down the middle. A little bit unorthodox, but I like my highlights that way. And finally, our little friend hiding back there in the corner. He needs some highlights too. Like that. And now we need to highlight our foreground. Taking our dirty one inch brush that still has that dark green in it from earlier. We'll just wipe that out a little bit. touch of the liquid white. Again, we're going to pull just like we did when we made the brushes, made the bushes, just like that. Let's get a nice little rounded corner. And we're just going to push. And the trick here is more paint, less pressure. It's not working right. You probably need more paint. And we're going to break up this big blob a little bit with smaller bushes. This is a technique that takes a lot of practice and is definitely not one of my strongest suits, but I'm getting better. Each time I do it, I get better and better and better. And yeah, nice little bush in here. Got a little bit of Indian yellow kind of in there. That's okay. Color is never a bad thing. And rather than just filling this all in with bushes, because that's boring, I'm going to use the same technique we use for our foothills back there. And I throw in a little bit of grass. Just like that. Hmm. And just because it's fun to add a little bit of 
variants in there. And then straight into that bright red. We're going to throw in a nice little firecracker right there. A couple little flowers in there. And the most important part, how to sign it. We're going to take our liner brush, fill it nice and full of paint thinner, pull it right through our bright red, give me a good little twist. To learn more about upcoming classes, visit paintwithq.com, or you can send me an email at paintwithq at gmail.com, or follow me on Facebook at paintwithq. Till I see you again, happy painting.